In Walter Benjamin's 1936 groundbreaking essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction, he establishes a focus on the senses in the subject's perception. This move anticipates affect theory, the field of study that examines the physiological role of emotion and sensation of non-linguistic forces. This description characterizes what Benjamin calls aura. Aura for Benjamin is not necessarily ephemeral, but visceral. This word describes the kind of embodied seeing that Benjamin celebrates. It is a spirit that brings soul, eye, and hand together to intensify the impression. This spirit, this aura, influences his posture not just toward art, but the world. In artistic representations, like photographs, for example, it is possible to apprehend what he calls the optical unconscious. Quote, it is through photography that we first discover the existence of this optical unconscious, just as we discover the instinctual unconscious through psychoanalysis, end quote. In other words, it is possible to see one's deepest and darkest desires represented in a photo or on the screen. Paving the way for this focus on sensation, Henri Bergson, a French philosopher famous for debating Albert Einstein and contemporary of Benjamin, emphasizes the perceived difference between felt time and clock time. Benjamin expands Bergson's new mode of perception to include an aura of authenticity that prompts the adjustment of reality to the masses and of the masses to reality. One way the masses learn to adjust to reality is through what Freud called sublimation. Freud taught us that civilization's neurotic tendencies are turned into symptoms, and this is precisely the role that cinema plays. It represents the symptom of the culture's neurotic tendency, in the same way a dream might for the individual. Technology, a word that combines the delicate relationship between art and intuition, grows increasingly more complex with cinematic advances. After filmmakers create the space for past and present to collide, spectators both apprehend and write history in the act of viewing it. Benjamin's Cesara in the Movement of Thought produces effects that make up histories. When a scene of a film is cut, the potential for interpretation follows. One of the revolutionary aspects of film came from the way this medium requires both distraction and concentration on the part of the viewer. Quote, a man who concentrates before a work of art is absorbed by it. End quote. As a result, the symptom swallows civilization. This absorption works on several levels, though. The distraction and concentration required to consume cinema requires a new mode of perception. In the same way, Benjamin challenges readers to bring past and present together to form a new concept of history. He anticipates the way movement that is often unacknowledged in apprehending visuals is absorbed in a way that becomes unconscious material. Not only does the work of art display unconscious material, the cycle of material production feeds the symptom back to the viewer. Aura is the mark of authenticity contained in a work of art. It is a quality that cannot be reproduced, and so there is a kind of privileging of the original. Walter Benjamin writes, quote, Even the most perfect reproduction of a work of art is lacking in one element, its presence in time and space its unique existence at the place where it happens to be." End quote. His concern is with the very act of thinking that transforms as a result of apprehending a work of art. While in some sense film provides the tactile quality that Benjamin is after, it simultaneously compromises the viewer's thought life. As George Dumel points out, quote, "...my thoughts have been replaced by moving images." When telling a story, we must create a picture in the mind that is so vivid we can touch it. And film is by far the most effective medium for achieving Benjamin's aura.